Welcome to the last video in this series, lesson 10. If I jump over to the finished code, we're gonna be adding these three custom themes down this way. Now, before we add these particular ones, I just wanna talk through kind of how you would do this uh, because we've set it up in such a way where it's really easy to add additional ones. There's really two steps you need to take, and that is first of all, to come down to the theme section. So we've got custom accent right here, custom themes. All you have to do is copy this down and then provide a new ID and label. So I'm gonna come in here and grab this, this, and this. We'll change all these for now. Let's just say like cool or something like that. So we've got a new cool option. You can see that it populates right over here. Now, when I click this, because the JavaScript is just set up to grab all my radios, if I jump over here, you're gonna see right here, data theme cool is there. The problem is we don't have anything in our CSS. So that brings me to the second thing you need to do, which is to add some CSS. So let's jump over this way. And I'm gonna jump up top here. There's two things you have to do in CSS. First of all, we wanna go ahead and declare these variables for our cool theme. So I'm gonna copy this down and let's just call this uh, cool. And then we can name these whatever we want. So let's just do, I don't know, I'm not even gonna to try to pick something good. We're just gonna grab random values and maybe make them very, uh, very awkward just so you can definitely tell that things have changed. Okay, so there we go. We've got five different values. These are promised. I promise you these are gonna look bad, but let's grab all of these now and change these to cool. All right, so now we said, hey, we've got a custom variable here of background cool. Now all I need to do is apply it whenever I have that data attribute of data theme equals cool. Now we've already done that before right down here. So what I'm gonna do is grab this and just copy it down one time. And the cool thing is because we've named them all cool, well, I can come in here and grab light, command D several times and just change these all to cool. Now, wow, well, I promised you it would look bad. I wasn't sure it would look quite that bad, but there we go. Don't do this to your people. But the other thing you may want to think about is whether or not this particular theme needs to have a color scheme light, or if you prefer it with a color scheme dark, which will give you this dark scroll bar over this way. So that's one more thing to think about, but this is all you have to do. Now, there is one other thing here, and that is that we've got this wave. And when I actually show you the three themes that we're going to add, I'll show you how we're going to handle this wave in each of these different design patterns. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this because I can't handle that anymore. And we'll come up here and get rid of this cool as well. Now, rather than you watching me type in these, I'm gonna just paste them in. We've got the wild, which is what we're gonna use for the 90s, the Dracula and the material. Then I'm gonna jump down this way. And all we have to do is basically switch these out like I just mentioned. So I'm gonna grab this here. And for each of these, let's come in here. We're gonna grab wild like this, wild. All right, and then let's do the same one for Dracula. And then finally, one more time for material. Now, in order to actually see these in real life, we need to come back over this way. And I need to change these right here, first of all, to uh, wild. And I ended up labeling this different. I think I called it 90s in my actual UI, but that should work because it's the actual ID uh, that matters. All right, and then I'll come in here and let's do Dracula. And then I'll change this to say Dracula. And finally, one more time, let's come down here and we'll call this material. All right, so now if I scroll down, I should have those as options. I click on 90s, it should show me 90s. Dracula should show me Dracula, and Material should show me Material. Now, with both Dracula and Material, I actually want the sidebar to be black, um, and this one's fine, I think, leaving that white. So that means I just need to come over here and make sure that for this, and for this down here, if I hit Command-D, I can change both of those at the same time, then I'll choose Dark. So if I come back over here, now I've got a dark scroll bar, and same for Material. I mentioned a moment ago that we still got this SVG we want to handle depending on kind of what you want, because sometimes themes can kind of mess things up. So this may look okay here, but I can tell you where it doesn't look okay is right here. All right, this looks a little too crazy. And then if I come in here, as I say, with a green background, but even here doesn't quite look right as far as fitting with the theme. So you can actually add a new property to anything when you update your theme as well. So just to show you how that works, I'm gonna come in here, we're gonna say data theme. And here I'll say when it equals wild, then I'm gonna grab the wave. Now this is a class on the SVG itself. So if I jump back over here, we do class equals uh, wave right here. All right, so it's on this SVG right here that we're looking at. So what I wanna do is whenever I have a data theme equals wild, I wanna grab the wave and I'm going to add a mix blend mode. And for wave, I found that overlay looked pretty good. Or for wild, I thought it looked pretty good. And this is not max, but mix blend mode. So let's come over here and I'm gonna select the 90s. So it kind of turns it to like a yellow flavor. So depending on what you choose here, like darken changes it to more like a purple hue, but I really liked this overlay. I thought that looked good. I'll copy this down as well, two more times, and we're gonna look at Dracula. And for this one, I thought screen looked pretty good. And then finally, let's look at material. And for this one, I thought luminosity looked pretty good. 
So I'll save that and then let's go ahead and just kind of feature each of these. So this one is very similar to the original one, but it just softens it slightly. And then with material, it really fades it to almost like a gray color, but I think it looks better with this material theme. It seemed to kind of fit it a little bit better. Hey, well, congratulations. That's all there is to creating your own custom theming system. And you can see how by using CSS variables and then updating stuff in JavaScript and on page load, you can very quickly template things out and your whole site can look very different based on the, the things you choose. Now, there are a bunch of other things you can do. For instance, you could have a toggle for like business or, you know, playful or whatever and change this headshot out depending on which you've selected. You can change around text depending on what you've selected. So there's a lot you can do, but the concepts are all the same. And on top of that, we also created a better default as far as the actual UI so that it looks more like a, a site setting toggle. You might also want to put this in some kind of a pop-up to where when somebody clicks on a button that says like adjust settings, it then pops up in the middle of the screen. I thought about doing that, but didn't want to overcomplicate this project. Well, I hope you've really enjoyed this series. It was a lot of fun to put together. A huge thanks again to Sean for having me on his channel. And if you like my style of teaching, I'd love to see you over on my channel, Coding in Public. All right, until next time, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Happy coding. So then my friends, I really, really hope you enjoyed this series and you learned something along the way. If you did, please, please, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like. That really means a lot. And if you want to access all of my YouTube courses without adverts, also get access to premium courses and early access courses as well, you can do at netninja.dev. You can sign up for NetNinja Pro, which is just $9 a month and also half price for the first month with this promo code right here and for that like i said you get access to every course without adverts without youtube adverts you also get access to exclusive courses not found anywhere else you get access to my premium courses on udemy and also early access to all of my youtube courses as well so the link to this page to sign up is going to be down below again i really hope you enjoyed this series and i'm going to see you in the very next one